Hello, Hope City. Welcome to the Daily Devo. Hey, today we're still continuing our series on spiritual warfare, and I want to bring you to an incredible book that gives us the behind the curtain look at spiritual warfare in its ugliest, and that's really the book of Job. And so if you turn to uh, Job, I'm going to kind of jump around just a little bit and give you a, a broad, real overview of Job, but it's definitely worth looking at. So the, the, the thing about Job is that um, the scene that it starts off with is actually behind the scene where there's a conversation actually between God and Satan. And so I want to pick that conversation up with you uh, in verse 6 of, of Job chapter 1. He says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? And Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down and on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, says, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and on his house and all that he has on his side and every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions and have creased land, but you stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only do not stretch out your hand so uh, against him. In other words, against his physical body. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So what happened was is that there's a uh, an accusation that Satan has brought before the Lord. And the accusation runs simply like this. Satan is telling the uh, God that the only reason why Job has blessed God and hasn't cursed him is because... God has bought his love. And so God allowed Satan to um, to go ahead and touch to see what happens. And so that's exactly where the story begins, is that there's this behind. Now, I want you to understand something pretty significant here. This is a conversation and a, a piece of accusation that Satan has against the Lord. And the accusation says, The only reason why man does what God blesses you is because you bought their love. You take away that protection, you take away those blessings, he'll curse you to your faith or to your face. Now we're getting a a real driving force of what Satan believes is his authority and what man is going to do when when the uh, push comes to the shove, when the chips are down. So the story unfolds with Satan absolutely afflicting his family and afflicting his financials, and afflicting uh, Job uh, materially. And so then it comes back into the heaven piece. So he takes his, his children, he takes his livestock, and Job is like kind of overwhelmed by this. But uh, what ends up happening is he stands back before the Lord. And so we find this continuing on in uh, chapter 1. So in, chapters, or in chapter 1, verses 13 through, Satan is taken his property, and has attacked his children. So then, um, in verse 22, he says, In all these things, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. So the very accusation that Satan had, it didn't land. By the way, that's a significant piece. Because when we talk about spiritual warfare, where the enemy's attacking you, that there's an opportunity where the enemy cannot and does not have to prevail. In other words, of all of humanity, Job was chosen to put on display that man was capable of worshiping God when the chips were down. That's a significant reality, and it's a significant blessing that Job wasn't really in tune with. In chapter 2, we find that Satan says the only reason why he didn't is because, guess what? You didn't let me touch his, his health. You let me touch his health, he'll curse you to his face. And so then what ends up happening is um, the Lord gives Satan the permission, but says that he can't take his life. So in verse 3, And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. And he still holds fast his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without reason. But Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, all that he has will give for his life. But stretch out your hand, touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said, Behold, he's in your hand. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from his presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome stores. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, he took a piece of broken pottery, which to scrape himself while he sat in the ash. 
His wife said to him, Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But he says to her, You speak as one of the foolish women who speak. Shall we receive good from God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. This is an incredible story. And so what ends up happening is three of Job's friends ends up hearing about this. And they come to Job. And, and I'm going to speak about that a little bit, little, little bit later in another devotional. But they came and they sat with him. And, um, and as they walked through this um, with Job, they walked with Job from the place of integrity that they could. But they all thought they had an answer for Job that was not the right answer. Spiritual warfare is when the enemy has been allowed to come. But understand that when we look at Scripture, he had to have authority of God. And if he has the authority from God, then you also have the authority to prevail. That's an important piece to understand when we're looking at spiritual warfare. That if you, as we prevail, as we seek to glorify God, as we seek to make it about God, we grow in the grace and the knowledge of God and the beauty of God unfolds in our life. Literally, the story of redemption and the story of God's beauty was written in the very fabric of Job's life. He preached. And in the end, what Job says is the fruit of what happened was, is I knew of you from the hearing of my ear, but now I know you. I know you personally. I saw you from afar, but now I see you close. The story of Job is one that he grew in intimacy with the Creator, and he recognized that God's ways are better than any way, and he defeated Satan through the testimony. You can do the same. Blessings.